Okay. There you go. This is yours. Thanks. Yay! Oh, I, I can sit. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everybody. Hi, Paul. Um. So, how do we do this? <laughs> no, it's cool. That, um, because Bell was talking about with uh, at the Joanne's uh testimony, how there's you know different perspectives from when you visit different areas and stuff like that. Tonight, it's going to be about perspectives. Yay! I know. Uh. Cause we we I think Ryan did um perspectives also when he was with his, during his turn. So I think I'm gonna call mine perception. Yeah. <laughs> and the sub first uh lines could be um uh, perspectives. Okay. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, no perspectives. It's perspective. No, there's no outline, so I'm not as organized as pastor. <laughs> where there's like Roman numerals, little numbers, and <laughs> big lowercase, uppercase. <laughs> but um, when Bella asked me, she asked me on Sunday. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, which is totally fine, you know, but like the flesh in me absolutely does not want to, but it's not reluctance. I still find it an honor to to be able to ask and to, you know, to share. And I'm amongst friends anyways, but my body is is real and my flesh is really like I, don't do it don't do it there's no time blah 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 you know all these excuses go in my head but i didn't i didn't hesitate i don't think i hesitated bell no. when you asked i i just said yes not because i was almost expecting you would say no but <laughs> yeah i think you were surprised i said yes <laughs> i was a little surprised too because <laughs> uh it would have been much easier just to say no because I had every right to say no. It wasn't my turn. It was only three days from now. And um, but I feel that in the same way, I remember I would tell myself if I could come to Bible studies, I should. Even when I don't want to, is usually that's the best time I should always go. I should always force myself to go when I don't feel like it, because that's when I need it most. Mm -hmm. So I felt in the same way where if I'm gonna be speaking about a certain subject i will be diving into it a lot more so i will be more focused and i would be reading and concentrating on god's word and at that time when she asked me on sunday that's exactly what i needed because my spiritual walk wasn't as as it should be as a teacher if someone's going to be teaching you know so i was I guess it was putting myself accountable to really dive into God's word again and, and just being um, immersed in his word and in, 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 in the spirit so that, because that's what I needed. So anyways, thank you for that. That's, it really is for me. So a lot of the things that I'm talking about is going to be from my perception or my perspective, and I hope it's able to bless you guys too. Um, so we'll start with a, a question. It's uh, what does perspective mean? To you guys maddie can you give me my coffee please yes, yes please um, about yeah thanks brother so yeah anyone what did what does perspective mean it's when you pastor. See, the, way you see things. the way you see things yeah your point of view your point of view right um so there's all so there's different perspectives like what what bill is saying uh, depending on where you're coming from or what angle you're looking at, at um, or even based on your experience will have, will cause you to have different perspectives. So it's also how we perceive something. Um, and what is proper perspective? Cause you've heard that before, right? Cause does that mean there's a right perspective and a wrong perspective? Could be. Right. That's possible to have a wrong perspective on something. And it's usually emotionally based when it's wrong, mm -hmm. you know? But what is, for us as believers, what is a proper perspective? Through the lens of the Bible. Through the lens of the Bible, it's through godly principles. God. Yes, rooted in God's word. That's what proper perspective is. Even in, it, in its own truth, it doesn't have to be as believer. Proper perspective, believer or not, is always going to be based on God's truth. Amen? Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes we lose that perspective. We lose our sight. We lose sight of God. Um, if we could turn to, let's go, we'll start with Jules. 
I'm sorry, I should have prepped you guys. I'll read the first one. More Deut Deuteronomy 8, please. Deuteronomy 8, and we'll be verses 11 through 11. Um, um, the, the, the Christian one. I think it was ESV. ESV is what I use. The, or NIV, that's okay. Yes. But then I do have some NIV. I didn't list it. And NLT on the other ones too. So Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11 to 18. Are you there? Yeah. Okay, thank is you. NLT? Yes, please. That's fine. Uh, Deuteronomy 8, verse 11. Do yes. Okay. Or let's do, are, are we all there? If we could do two verses each. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, but that is the time to be careful. Beware that in your plenty, you do not forget the Lord your God and disobey his commandments. Regulations and decrees that I am giving you today. Oh, sorry. Two verses? Three. Yeah. For when you have become full and prosperous and have built five homes to live in. Louder for the. The louder than. Sorry. 13. 12. I read, I read yeah, she read some of the You know, since because it's on the mic, maybe I could read this. Is it better for okay. Zoom? You just have to go louder. Okay. I was trying to save you. Oh, 13? Yeah, yes. 13, 14. And when your herds and flocks multiply, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart be lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, through that thirsty and waterless land, with his venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of, the, out, out of hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known, to humble and test you, so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Amen. And so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your forefathers as it is today. Amen. Amen. So sometimes we can lose sight of God in our wealth or even our accomplishments, in our, in our you know, material things. Um, we lose sight of them. You know, because we're enjoying the earthly rewards or the earthly things that God's blessed us with. Um, and as, you know, fleshly beings, we it's easy to get lost in those things. So that's one area that we can lose our sight. That's one reason we can lose our sight on God. Um, another thing is that we can lose him in, in our despair also. You know, when we're sad, when we're going through things, when we're overwhelmed. Because um, it's... It's easier to be pessimistic, right, than positive. Um, unfortunately, that's like the sinful nature in us. We always kind of see first the bad in things. I do, unfortunately. I try not to, but it usually comes up, and that's that's the urge I have to fight against mm -hmm. first because of God's grace. And then, I, you know, because of what we learn through, through his word, um, to be hopeful, you know. And then we, and then it reminds us because we're sinful then we're able to see that I'm as equal to that person's, you know what I mean? I'm not any better than that person because we both need Jesus. So, but um, losing sight of him in our despairs also, I'm going to read from second Corinthians chapter one, uh, verse eight to 10. Sorry, the speaker oh, that's okay. I thought something someone was saying something. I was like, who's that? At the grace? <laughs> Chapter 1, verse 8 to 10. I'll read. Um, verse 8. We think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. I believe this is when he, um, Paul was shipwrecked. He was stoned. He was put in prison. It says, uh, we were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure, and we thought we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die. But as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely on God, who raises the dead. And he, res and he did rescue us from the mortal danger, and he will rescue us again. We have placed our confidence in him and he will continue to rescue us. Mm -hmm. In verse 9, it says, um, you know, when it talks about 
we learn to rely on God and then comma, who raised, who raises the dead. Why did he add that? Who raises the dead? We know who God is, but why did he add that detail? He raises the dead. I think it widens your perspective of that about God. Yeah. You know, that like if he raised him from the dead, he right. sure can save us. Mm -hmm. Like our issues are going to be small in comparison to like. Yes, <laughs> that's it. That's it right there. I, that's why I believe like, yeah, if he could raise the dead, he could do whatever comes to us. Mm -hmm. It's no problem for him, right? It's in comparison. It's so small. And it it also brings into light the the powerful nature or the vast difference of who he is and who we are. Mm -hmm. You know, the vast difference of him being the solution to our now small problem, even though we're almost close to death, it's still small compared to what he's capable of. Mm -hmm. And then it puts now it puts Pastor, you had something? No, it, oh, yeah. I think with what he was what he was uh um describing and the experiences that he had mm -hmm. from the context i think it may have been that the experiences he had was close were, were close to death right they were actually get, getting very close to death that he said those were even if we yeah die. even if we do <laughs> die it's still not a problem <laughs> like the worst thing can happen to us is we die yes. but that's still not a problem for god yeah <laughs> because he raises the dead so what more if we're alive and still go through it yeah. he could take care of everything else too um yeah that's true so it helps and then because of that because they went through that they learned to rely on god mm -hmm. it's almost like not until they went through that they because they wouldn't have to rely on god if they were able to rely on, rely on themselves but they had to come to a point where there was no way out except to rely on god and then because of that almost like practice or that practice in faith the next time something similar happens, it's okay. You know, um, a little testimony. I, I, It should be a testimony, but it's like bad things keep happening to me. <laughs> but, you know, but it's a testimony of the built in like resilience towards it. You know, the first time, it, you know, you guys heard the story, you know. Well, other, you know, besides almost dying from COVID and then within two months before that, we got in a car accident with Layla and then before. Yeah, it was before. Cause I remember I was sick and the total car was all damaged in there. <laughs> anyways. And then we got a new car. The car got broken into while I was sick, you know? So it's like all these things happened at one time. And then uh, months later uh, or, or, you know, the next big thing was like um, st st stuff I made for, for work was stolen you know, can't, was not recovered. We didn't, I didn't get any compensation or, or recovery from that except to work. Um, you know, it's like $15,000 worth of damage or worth of goods stolen. And I was like, you know, that could put me out of business. But when that something happened years ago where I, there was a mistake at work, I, I, I've said this testimony before that we made a mistake at work. It was like a, about a $15,000 mistake also that was going to put us out of work, but God worked through the, the, the customer and gave us total grace because they had every right to charge me $15,000. Mm -hmm. um, but they let me, they still continue to pay while part of that payment was paying back the debt. I owed them because of the damage I made. So number. yeah, 15 was, is like the increment that God uses in my life. Yeah. And so the second time it happened at about 15,000, um, yeah, right. It could be more, but maybe God's giving me whatever I can handle. So, um, it wasn't as bad, you know, it wasn't as bad. I, I had a, a better, I learned at least to rely on, on God up to $15,000. Right. So <laughs> So it wasn't that bad. The second time I heard the news, it was lost. Sure, my my heart dropped and and you know I've got a little bit of anxiety for a good day and a half. But I was like, but God's gonna come through because He has before. So I've experienced that He's gonna come through again. Yeah. So it, it not only does it build a, a, a an experience, but my belief level has gone up a little bit too. It stretches my belief level um, when I'm training the kids in volleyball. Usually I was telling the kids on the way here, sorry guys, like every time I have an example, it's either going to be work, <laughs> the kids, the you know, the wife, or volleyball. <laughs> you know, that, that's it. That's my world, you know? Yep. <laughs> and um, 
it's like so that so you know in volleyball the kids when they're young they don't know they don't, everything looks so hard and when i bring layla to do an exa- a sample when i'm training the younger kids and layla would die forget a ball and look she makes it look easy and they're and the first thing they think is like i can't do that that's so that's crazy you know i can't dive until you try to you might get one out of ten but now you believe that oh, I was able to touch that. I'm going to try a little bit more. So now you try 50 times and you get 20 of them out of 50. The more you try, the more you get the belief. Level, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it kind of builds um, that that belief level in steps. Mm-hmm. And um, and it and it kind of tests my faith to keep going. Mm-hmm. I don't get, you know, uh, another perspective I wanted to share um, some of our kids, or especially at Layla, then now that she plays at a higher level, a lot of the struggles is mental, you know, because the skill is all there and her her teammates all have similar level of skills. They specialize in different things, but the mental attitude is tough, is, is where it's harder when you're playing another team that's just as good. So the difference becomes to how, how confident or how scared you are, how nervous you are. So what's the difference? Because you guys probably heard of this. You play to win or you play not to lose. Mm-hmm. right so what's the difference what's perspective, perspective yeah what's the, what's the perspective what's the perspective of playing not to lose it's just safe. to survive You're playing safe just to survive right just to not fail mm-hmm. yeah. right we're playing to win you would be aggressive no matter what you would play your best and you keep trying to go forward mm-hmm. Layla has many examples of playing not to lose playing not to fail where she it's game point and her self-talk might be, I hope they don't serve it to me. Mm-hmm. You know yes. what I mean? I don't want to be. You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't want to She's be not here. Like- she's actually she's got practice <laughs> to overcome this fear. No, but I told her I was going to talk about her. <laughs> yeah. And then, so when you play not to lose, you can only stay where you're at or go lower. Mm-hmm. You can never move forward if you because you're just playing to stay where you're at and hopefully last. But when you play to win, you always try to take one more inch, one more inch. You'll take a little bit of risk. Sometimes it'll play, it'll it'll play out, sometimes it won't, but you still take that risk. And so Layla has those struggles, and all the girls have that struggle. And you could tell on the other team, once our team um overcomes their fears. Now Layla has like, you could see her in videos do this well, on the serve, like serve to me. I'm the best passer on the team, even though she may not be, but she is right now. Pass, oh, serve it to me. Serve, she actually is one of the best passers, yeah. but serve it to me. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm going to get this. And I know if it comes to me, it'll move forward. We're going to win. And so this, comp, yeah, it's a big difference. And then the cheer on the sideline, it's just how loud it is. And that puts the other team to play not to lose because now we're so overwhelming as a as a as a whole. We start getting bigger and bigger and scarier, and it's the same, it's all mental, yeah. you know. And the same thing comes to us, to me, when it comes to my spiritual walk. You know, am I playing not to lose, or am I really trying to grow and test my faith? Am I trying, you know? And so that was kind of like perspective that oh man that that. That's a big deal. So um, we don't want to lose sight in our despairs either. So how how do we measure something that's small? Or how do we measure anything? I mean, literally, how do we measure something? With uh, measuring a tape, measuring tape, uh, a rule. Yeah. Finger. Rule, hand, finger, whatever. We have uh, something, uh, an example we put next to, right? Mm-hmm. A scale. Um what unit of measure are we using when we're measuring our um, perspectives on things? Are we using the me- the measurements that the world gives us? Because the world tells us what's like, I, I was blessed by the message Bell talked about, what the world tells us, it, which is what's good in life. Mm-hmm. Prosperity, uh, accomplishments, accolades, res- respect. These are the things you want to aim for, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and then when you don't have it, then you're a failure. Mm-hmm. That's what the world tells us. Cause that's the unit of measurement that the world tells us, but the unit of measurement that God tells us, what are they? What 
because we know what the world says is good. But from a godly perspective, what unit of measurement does God tell us that we are successful as a Christian, as a believer? It doesn't mean that we were supposed to be poor. I'm just saying what measurements, what do you guys think are some of the measurements that we should be using as uh, tools to measure our our faith, our success? Faithfulness. Faithfulness. What's an example of faithfulness? Faithfulness, if you're like whatever God gives to you, no matter how big, no matter how small. Yes. Are you faithful in handling? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good steward. Stewardship. Yes. Like, yes. To, like, live it out based on the truth that you know of. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Good. Like faithfulness, stewardship. What else? What's another godly measurement that we should be using to measure our perspectives? Uh, for me, I think obedience. Obedience. Yeah. Because I think um, it could be, it varies for each person, right? Like yeah. God is not calling us to all the same things. Right. But right. As we, like, I wouldn't know what God is calling you to obey versus my, what God is calling you to obey, right? Kind of going mm -hmm. back to the whole um, story of Saul, where like, was his measure of like, obedience yeah you know how successful he was in his reign right you know or how many concubines he had or whatever um it was god measured it through his obedience on what he did or didn't do according to um, what god told him yeah yeah, so yeah. I, that's one one of right them. right and it's different that's true and it's different for every one of us because all of our perspectives even in our spiritual lens is different yeah. it's not right or wrong but it's different as long as we are looking at it through the lens of eternity through the lens you know through uh, a godly perspective amen yeah so when <clears throat> so that just it was just like when a mouse looks at an elephant he's gonna think wow that's big right but when a giraffe looks at an elephant where well, hey he's kind of short you know what i mean so <laughs> so it kind of depends where where you're at you yeah. know um the mouse can still bite it a little bit at a time and eat the whole thing <laughs> yeah, sure. but neither of them are wrong you know what i mean um it just really depends where you're looking from <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah so this is true for things that are 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 th yes pastor yes you know how important perspective is on the way we react to things that's how we like, react to things yeah, yes yes because it's very important because like for example when an elephant and a and a lion mm -hmm. like view each other the attitude of an elephant the elephant is way much bigger way much heavier right than the lion yeah so when the elephant looks at the lion it's saying about undead <laughs> right yeah. right that's true right like, already when defeated the looks at the elephant, you can't run that fast right he, he, he's thinking much yeah you know yeah <laughs> and, and that reason it creates a very different attitude between the elephant and the law. And right. The, it's the same thing with life. Yeah. Maybe we may not be the biggest people there. We may not be the highest position. Mm -hmm. But if your perspective is correct, you could accomplish a lot more. Right. Right. Because you could already have that defeated yeah. attitude also. Because if someone never knew or never saw or understood what an elephant or a lion was, and they just see them too, yeah. And they're about to fight each other and they don't know anything about them. Who would you put your money on? You put your money on the elephant whose hide is so thick, <laughs> who's two tons and could just squash this little furry animal with, you know what I mean? But, but, you know, it, it yeah, that's true. It's, it's the perspective and the attitude too, which kind of brings me to the next part too, because the attitude um, of, of where you're coming from, also plays a big big difference or big role in your perspective is your attitude um when okay so another uh, question I, I wanted to ask well okay so besides attitude there's also levels of maturity um there's different perspectives depending on where you are in your spiritual walk in your in your age you know a 13 year old perspective 17 year old like Layla or even me as a 48 year old right like one of uh, Elijah's friends uh, on his volleyball team is also a, a schoolmate, Noah. He's he's thirteen, and um, and I'm trying to correct him doing volleyball practice. So I want him to have this level of maturity on the court because he's he's still new at the sport. So he's a little bit when he messes up, he really shows it in his face. Oh. You know what I mean? Uh, 
But, and I told him, hey, man, you're one of the, the leaders in this group because you're one of the more experienced, you and Elijah. And so whatever you show, it's going to affect the rest of the team, you know? But if they see you making a mistake and you recovering quickly, that also will affect the team. Yeah. So that I'm trying to encourage them to be more, more, um, just have a better attitude, you know, being aware of how it looks like because their perspective, you know what I mean? Um, and then how encouraging it could be for your teammates to see you let go of mistakes. So when they have a mistake, they could also let go. Um, so that, but then, huh, what's that? Good. Yeah, but it's tough for a person who's still learning. He wants to do really good, but he makes mistakes, you know? And then Layla, who's been playing since she's nine years old, making a mistake now, she just brushes it off because I know I'm going to get another one. I want to get another one. Um, and the difference with me, so as a 48-year-old, when Layla's having issues, I'm trying to, the difference in my, you know, in my experience and wisdom and what I've seen and what I see through her from a third-party uh, angle, perspective, I could tell her, look, you know, it's okay. I know it was, you touched the ball last and that was the last point and they won, but it's not your fault. You're not defined by that one mistake. You know, it was a, a group effort and why you lost. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it wasn't just your fault. Um, but you know, so there's my my perspective as a 48 year old, and then there's God's level of perspective also, where God looks at you is like you're you're feeling overwhelmed, talking to me, you're feeling overwhelmed because you're you're not doing well financially, you know, you're so busy, you're you're, you're struggling, you're you're not sleeping well. Your knees hurt. Your back hurts. Your arm hurts. Amen. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Amen. I get MRIs every other day. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and God's like, I raised the dead. Mm. You know, my, like, and he looks at me and my little tiny problems. I created the universe. And you're talking about these little things that happen in your little life. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, it's like you there's there's that even creates a bigger perspective and the vast difference between who I am and Layla and the vast difference between who God is and all of us, you know, so that that it gives me hope and peace to know that I'm relying on an infinite power source to take care of my my, my issues. Um I have a comment about that. Yes, please. Just, uh, example with, you know, you guys have seen that thing where they zoom out from like, you know, Google um, Earth. Yeah, like yeah. Google Earth, yeah. Right? Like yeah. Just kind of like yep. zooming. It's yeah. like this whole world and then the universe or whatever, or like yeah. the cosmos or whatever. That's right. right? And it's just totally. like, God, God sees all of that. Yeah. And yet he zooms into little humans like us. That's and true. Into our very needs yeah like yeah the needs that we have tomorrow <laughs> you know we right. already covered those so Very yeah fun. that's true that i'm looking at two ways of that too because i brought that up before like years ago yeah. that like about our problems you know we see our little problems we're so focused it's right here but god could see not only in our little little space but you zoom out us and you're that little dot in in sun valley north hollywood <laughs> you zoom out a little bit more earth you yeah. zoom out a little more the galaxy you know yeah. and then the universe and god's like i created all of this i could take care of that little tiny thing that you can't even see on the map anymore and i could take care of that but not but from what you're saying not only that i created everything but i'm still so focused on you your house no matter how small you are in the vast creation that i've made i have a personal relationship with you and that I will take care of you, how small, you know, it's like, oh man. And that just gives a new perspective of like how powerful he is mm -hmm. and how loved we are by such a powerful being, you know, and praise God. And not just powerful in might, but is an infinite, infinite level of, of love towards us that we can't even fathom, you know, and that's, and that perspective, I think really lends to the peace that we have when we're, we're trying to regain our, our sight on him again, you know, praise God. Um, so let's see it. My relationship. So a, a little bit of testimony for me, um, my relationship with Jesus started in youth camp, 1998. It was a, uh, at FCF. I was invited. I came just because Marlene was here. And, <laughs> yeah. 
Um, but uh, when I, I had, <laughs> but when I, uh, when I, how much time? Sorry. Ten, nine minutes. Okay. So when I went to camp, um, I wasn't distracted. You know, I didn't have, well, it's not like I had a career or anything, but I wasn't really distracted by her that much because we're doing skits, we're doing whatever, <laughs> cheers, you know, stuff I've never done before. What's going on? What kind of camp is this? <laughs> but, um, but I was, uh, I was uh, um, also a captive audience to the preaching. You know, I, I had nothing but to listen. <laughs> I didn't really do anything else. We're all sitting there. And I finally started to listen to what the preacher was saying. I forgot. He was a Filipino pastor. I forgot what he was talking about. I, I mean, I forgot his name. But he was talking about how Jesus will make us white as snow. Mm -hmm. I already knew I was a sinful person just from action. You know, and from deeds and consequences I've had in the past, um, but to know that my relationship with Jesus would wipe that clean, you know, and there's nothing I could I could ever do to do it myself or or become good or you know, um, and that was available to me. So that's when my perspective on things changed since that day because now because I thought I I had. Um, a, uh, a beautiful girlfriend. She wasn't my girlfriend, but I knew she was going to be my girlfriend. So I had a beautiful. <laughs> I'm trying. To... She'll be mine one day. I'm just kidding. Please, please. <laughs> no. So I was just thinking I had I had a car because these things were important to me as a teenager. Yeah, yeah. The purple cat that gets me places. Gas is only two dollars. Um, yeah, gas is. I remember gas was eight and nine cents before. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, I had a, I had a girlfriend. I had a car. I had loyal friends that I could count on. Things that were so important to me as a teenager, as a you know young twenty year old. Um, I had a I had a job, so I had enough money to have fun. I I said I had no complaints, you know, until until I found out I'm a sinful person and a death and that uh, spiritual death is real. You know, because I was so think I was thinking so much on the surface, but anyway, so not until I had that perspective, and I was like, "Oh man, nothing else matters. All that stuff is rubbish, right?" And it was it's from Philippians, and you brought this verse up on Sunday too. And I was just blessed; like a lot of these things were coinciding with what Bell preached on Sunday. Philippians three eight says, "Indeed, I count everything as as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for His sake." I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. So I was I had a new perspective of not that just everything that I had was rubbish compared to my new relationship with Jesus, but so much that I'm willing to give it all up so that I could have a relationship with Jesus if I needed to, because it was worth more than all of that, you know, and because that brings value the perspective having a proper perspective also bring, also brings value to my relationship or our relationship with god um eight minutes so how do we keep our sights on god so sights some of us are gun owners here we have sights on a gun right um and there's some of them are iron sights <laughs> So some of them are iron sights. Not about not all of us are snipers with little scopes or anything. But so you know, if it's a pistol, it's an iron sights, right? <laughs> and we use the sights to kind of, you know, put in focus our target. So how do we stay on target? What are what are our sights that we use that keep our sights or keep our focus on God? Keep our focus on the target. Because I know when we're shooting, sometimes I have a bad habit of shooting with one eye closed. You know, Same. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I, yeah, I guess it's common, but I hear it's better to shoot with both eyes open. Oh, wow. You know, you're supposed to have better vision, or you're supposed to, yeah, you're supposed to use your dominant eye, but you know, and um, and it's weird because you have to focus on just the target while blurring out everything else. Yeah, right. It's hard. It's tough. Yeah, yeah. and that's the perspective you need to kind of focus on. So it takes work. You know what I mean? So it's like when you're when we're focusing on God, it's not always just read God's word and pray. Yes, that is the foundation, but it takes 
a uh, an effort, a, a conscious effort to stay on focus. Because when I was doing, when I was trying to shoot with both eyes, it would kind of blur out and come back in. And in. I was like, yeah. oh, what's going right? I can't keep focused. So I have to really concentrate and make it a goal that that's the target that I'm trying to aim at. And I have to slowly squeeze the trigger because you don't pull the trigger because it'll come, you know what I mean? You have to squeeze it while staying on focus. So I had to to continually work while staying on uh, like a hyper focus. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what are some of the ways that you feel in your life? Because it's different from everyone and different everyone's walk that you could, you don't have to answer, but maybe this is something that you could, um, uh, what's the word? Think about, reflect on, yeah. uh, in your ponder. In, ponder. Thank you. Um, ponder yeah. <laughs> I want to share a little story with Layla. I told Layla that I was going to talk about her well because she's like, every time you speak, I'm at practice. I was like, you you practice like four times a week, so it doesn't matter. It's always something. Yeah. <laughs> um. So uh, two nights ago, she was feeling overwhelmed because that's what Faith Baptist does. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right, Julia. Oh, um, I don't know. That's like I know. I heard stories of Julia. <laughs> She's funny. But now school's a lot easier because of it. I heard you. It was, it was. Yeah, but um, because because yeah, Layla had. She was yeah. She was uh just overwhelmed with with the schoolwork, the school, the workload, and I heard it's not even as bad as it used to be. It used to be worse. Um, Right, yeah. I know it's not fair. Yeah, and uh she was in because it's she only has like three weeks left of school, and I guess maybe the the, the teachers are kind of like, uh oh, we need to finish this <laughs> curriculum. Here's more work, you know. So I don't know if it's a teacher's fault or yeah, yeah. so yeah, but, yeah. So um, so she got like projects happening, and so that by itself is tough to manage. And then she has commitments with volleyball yes. and her commitment with volleyball is at a higher level because she, she plays on the elite team. So everyone on the elite team has to be committed. You know, school always comes first. That's for sure. <laughs> but your attendance is also looked at, not just by the coach. It doesn't count against you per se. Like you don't get punished, but your, your perception or your, your, I guess, credibility with the team is not, the same because yeah. how come everyone else has homework and they still show up yeah. you know and the coaches kind of sees who's available so she's struggling also like i have to i need more time with homework because i have more of it but i have practice tonight and i'm not done with practice until 10 o'clock mm -hmm. So that means I'm not going to be done with school or the schoolwork till like one or two o'clock in the morning. And I got to wake up at seven or six 30 mm -hmm. and it's like, and it's going to happen for the next couple of days. Cause she doesn't have it. You know what I mean? And it compounds. So she was so overwhelmed. I was at work being overwhelmed myself because <laughs> it was like 11 o'clock at night. So she was going to oh, work. <laughs> <I know. laughs> so she, she was, she went to Marlene and, and she was like sobbing. She was uncontrollably crying in front of her brother. She didn't even care. No. She was just like, you know, <laughs> just out of control. She, this is the first time in a long time that she was really uncontrollably crying and, and like, like, like frustrated and just felt like there's no way out. Mm -hmm. She couldn't think of a, what she can do, not only just with schoolwork, but how do I talk to my coach who she has a good relationship with to let him know that this is still important, but I still need a little bit of a break to do my work, you know? So she's struggling with that. Cause I've already missed a couple of practices because of, of, of junior, senior, um, and other events, you know, choir and, and, and competition, you know, West coast competition, you know, cause she was there for like three days or two days or whatever it is. And uh, so the coach knows that I've already missed practices and even though, and then she still does makeup practice because she wants to show commitment. So she makes it, she's, that's why she's there today. Today, she's normally here. You guys know she used to come, but she's there to make up a practice because she did not go yesterday she because, and because she has a tournament this weekend and, I'm and stressed. it's fair and it's <laughs> fair. Stressed, yeah. Really. And because she knows it's fair for the coach to choose yeah. people who are coming to practice sure. for the tournament. 
because it's unfair to play people out of even though she had a good uh, relationship with the coach, it's unfair to the rest of the team if if he favors her by letting her play the same as the other girls that are coming up, showing up to practice. So that's why she's making up last night's practice today. But, okay, so back to the story. She was crying to, oh, man, I don't have one minute. I'm sorry. Is it, can I? Four things to say? I do, but I don't have. No, you can do it for two. No. <laughs> I'm going to finish. Go, go oh, we have to go pick her up. But okay. what did, what did, uh, what, so what was it? What happened? Because I know she, she was, uh, like, going to you and just kind of crying. And, but she wanted, she said the word, like, I want to quit. She wanted to be or school. I know. <laughs> Both, yeah, mom, yeah. Mom. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. <laughs> she just felt like winning because she felt <laughs> like <laughs> she was saying, like, I, I, I'm built different than my friends. It seems like it's easy for them. I feel like I'm struggling so much. And then what did you tell her? Thinking like them, like I don't think like them. Like, just literally all just the being, she's, is, yeah, just being pessimistic. Yeah. Not, I mean, it wasn't her fault, but she's just thinking of all the negative because because of what she's going through, you know. Yeah. And it builds and it builds. And so, what did you tell her? How did you encourage her? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, at first, it was I was more of like, like it's her fault. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's not what I was looking for, but okay, then. You would have not yeah. been in the situation if, if you planned, you planned ahead. Because you knew you had these projects earlier. Yeah, that's what I told right. her before. Like, right. if you have a project, this, and you need to plan it out. Yeah, and with her, it's, and I get it. Like, she's overwhelmed with yeah. all this. So it's like, but I had to point that out to also. It is preventable. You know, at least a little bit. know that this is a consequence that you, you get. Right. And at the same time, like, she was, you know, just, you know, just sobbing and i was like okay Lord. <laughs> yeah. what do i say now right you know? right like, okay well okay let's well i just want to let you know that look your friends are not they don't have the same schedule as you they don't have the same you know you have volleyball uh and on top of that practices and all that but they don't mm -hmm. you know so don't compare yourself to them like literally like you know, know that you're you're different from from everyone, right? And so, right. But then again, it's like, wait, but you know what? Let's look at this in God's perspective. Like, look, I want I want to remind you that you've been through this. Yes. Wait, um, I, I I don't mean to stop you because I know it's nine thirty one. I am on the last half. I mean, last last page. If this is all I have left, if I could just finish that story. I, res I want to respect your time, but I think it only takes like four more minutes, if that's okay. Okay. Good. Oh, so, yeah. So, God's perspective. Yeah. It's letting you know that you went through this before. And yeah. how, how did God pull you through that? Mm -hmm. Like, you have, to re uh, you have to remember that, look, um, God is aware of what you're going through. Don't forget that he's there. Right. And with all that you've been through, it's like you went and for rodeo. <laughs> yeah. Again, this is like, I don't know, fifth time. So it's like, but we do forget. We do mm -hmm. forget what God has done in our lives. And right. I was telling you, like, like the Israelites, like they saw the parting of the sea, like compared to us seeing something that's, right. you know, maybe smaller than that. But yeah. it's like, can you imagine you seeing that miracle and then you forget? Right. you know and it's like and we and she and she's like that's true and so she's kind of she, she was calm she's more calm right and then um so but her perspective was like changing like things were like that's true mom yeah like i i know god has pulled me through this before over and over again and i've just forgotten it mm -hmm. and it's like okay well you know that um th this is this is where you have to let your focus be upon god again like with all this problem and this you're, you're just so overwhelmed but you know praise god that he is in our life he's in your life um so you know that's what you want to hold on to right don't have other other stuff no but that's but that's the main thing so and it was like uh she felt now this overwhelming peace you know she was so she was nervous, anxious, 
And then when I came home later that night, um, she was in, in our bed because she was whatever, what, uh, crying out to mom. She fell asleep on mom's chest, Aww. like a, like a baby and totally peaceful. Like she's finally able to get that release, you know, and she just was knocked out, you know? <laughs> yeah. She, it was like, oh. But you know, it was like, like, it was like that same, like the same baby girl, you know, that we used to get hurt and cry and fall asleep on your chest. You know, but her feet's like hanging off the bed. And she's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I wanted to say that this is the close. Just a slight. The only difference was that and she was almost defeated so much that she just wanted to quit everything. She just wanted to give up. But just a slight gaze towards God. Made every all her her, her problems vanish. And she's just kind of like, oh, yeah. God's come through for me before, you know, I just need to remember. I just need to remind myself. And it was like, we just need, I just need to have that even slight gaze towards his greatness, towards his light that would just dry up all the tears, just dry up all the problems that I could go on, you know? And then the next day she was perfectly fine. She started you know, she was so perky and, and she did all her homework and then she actually made it to the last half of the practice that she, last night that she was missing. But then to show her teammates that she's committed, to show her coach that she's committed, because she already told the coach, I can't come. And he understood it was cool, but she still came the last hour because she was able to finish early. And so she felt better. She had more, she felt like she had integrity in what she was doing also, you know, to show the team, the coach and and still finish which and then she was able to see what God has did. And all, the only difference was just a change in perspective. She wasn't saying, you know, I'm not as smart as my friends. I, you know, I got so many things to do. I don't have time, blah, blah, blah. She wasn't dwelling on that, but she was dwelling on God's come, came through. To, I, I, I felt like this before, but God came through last time. He's going to do it again. And he did. And so, you know, that was it. So in Psalms, this is the last verse I want to finish up on. Psalms 62, verse 5, it says, Yes, my soul finds rest in God. My hope comes from Him. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Amen. That's it. Yeah. Oh, more today. <laughs> oh, you want to pray? Yeah, let's pray. So yes, we yes. Today. Thank you, everyone, for for allowing me to. No, praise God. It's a blessing to me. No, oh, praise God. <laughs> praise God. All right, let's pray. Um, Lord, I thank you again for the opportunity to just glorify you in all of our situations, good or bad. Um, in wealth or in despair, Lord God, you are there. Mm -hmm. We uh, pray, Lord, for reminders to uh, look towards you um, in all things. We want to glorify you again, Lord. We Thank you for your protection, not just physically, but emotionally, but also spiritually in our in our attitudes. We, you are the reason um, that we have peace. You are the reason we have joy. You are the root of our uh, of our happiness, Lord God. We pray, Lord, that we be reminded of these things. We want to lift all this up to you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Can I? See you guys. We're going to stop this recording.